Hey everybody, welcome back to another lesson in calculus. We are actually starting a new unit today, that's exciting. Unit 8 in our AP Calculus AB. Can you believe it? We're already in Unit 8. We have this unit and then two more to go, and then all we got to do is prepare for that AP exam, right? All, it's all we got to do, right? Um, so this first lesson, uh, this unit, by the way, is titled More on Integration and the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. So we're going to learn the rest of the fundamental theorem in this unit. Uh, we're going to look at a little bit more integration. We're also going to we'll look at some techniques, some additional techniques that we can use to help us find the integral. Uh, this lesson here, we're going to look at some additional formulas for integration. That's where we're going to start this unit off two lessons with some additional formulas. You'll have to pardon my handwriting, uh, not that it's ever particularly good, uh, but I do not have my little tablet with me, so I'm going to have to just draw with the mouse. So I'll do the best I can. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. Recall the following integration rule. The integral of 1 over u du. That's, uh, or you can think of that as du over u, u prime over u. That's the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Well, with this rule and some basic u substitution, we can easily derive the formula for the integral of tangent and cotangent. Uh, I don't know if, if you notice, but we actually don't have that formula yet. We, we did not have an integral of tangent. Uh, we've had an integral that results in tangent, right? The integral of secant squared u is... Uh, tangent u plus c, but since tangent is never the result of a derivative of just a regular um, trig formula, we, we should be not surprised that our formula for its integration is going to be a little bit different. So let's take a look. Um, the integral of tangent, the integral of tangent is really saying, and oh my goodness, can you believe me? I f cannot believe I forgot my dx's. Bad Wilshire. Okay, so uh, the integral of tangent is sine x over cosine x dx. So now we need to look at this. We need to think. Well, we could let u be sine of x, but then we would, when we took the derivative, we would have like cosine of x, we'd have our like du in the bottom. We can't have du in the denominator. That doesn't make any sense. So what we really need to do is let u be the denominator. So I'm going to let u be cosine of x so that du is equal to sine of x dx. All right, well, that works out pretty nicely, doesn't it? So then this just becomes the integral. Uh, sine x d... Ooh, wait, wait a minute, hold on a second. The derivative of cosine is negative sine x. Excuse me. So negative, and the derivative of sine dx dx was du, so that'll be a negative du out in front. And cosine of x is just u. Well, we know this formula. The integral of du over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. That makes this negative the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x plus c. Notice that we got co is an answer in an integral, and the answer is negative. So that continues that little trick. The next one is well, pretty much the same process. Cotangent, though, is cosine of x over sine of x dx. And then we can simply do a u substitution for sine of x. So I'll let u is equal to sine x. So du is equal to positive cosine of x. Remember, when you take a derivative, it's if you take a derivative of a co, the answer is negative. So cosine of x dx, I took a derivative of sine, so it's still positive. So cosine x dx, that's my du. And sine of x is simply u. So when I integrate, that becomes the natural log of the absolute value of cosine, oh, not cosine, sine x plus c. 
So those are two of our formulas right there. We know that if we just called this u instead of x, we'd get a formula in terms of u, which we like. Now, with a bit more cleverness, we can actually derive the formulas for secant and cosecant as well. Uh, just to keep this somewhat short, I'm going to just uh, derive the formula for the integral of secant. Just a quick note here about memorizing. We want to be able to work through calculus quickly, calculus problems quickly, especially on the AP multiple choice. So you really need to memorize tangent and cotangent. But if for some reason you forgot them, just changing it to sine and cosine makes it pretty easy to solve with the U substitution. With secant and cosecant, though, you're never going to remember how to do this unless you know the formula. So you, you absolutely have to memorize this one, I'm afraid. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom of this. Again, I forgot my dx. So how sad. Uh, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this integral with secant x plus tangent x. That's the trick. And with some derivations of formulas, you know, it's pretty straightforward, like with the derivation of, of the integral of tangent. Other times, there's really a trick that you use, you have to know what you're looking for as a result and work to get that. So when I distribute secant, I'm going to end up with secant squared x on top plus secant tangent. And now this will start looking like something that you know. And then on the bottom, of course, we still got that, just that basic old secant x, tangent x. And then we have our dx out here. So what we need to do on this one is we need to actually let u equal secant x tangent x. Secant x plus tangent x, that is. So then that makes du equal to, the derivative of secant is secant tangent and the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. And that whole thing is times dx. Now it's in a slightly different order here, but you know the order of addition doesn't matter. Can you see that this is exactly the numerator in this part of the problem here? So this integral with our u substitution works out to just be du over u. We know that that's the integral of natural log of x. That's what that results in. So we're going to say the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of, what was our u? Secant x plus tangent x plus c. So once again, we see that natural log as being a big bridge between different kind of things, different kind of uh, concepts, you know, we've seen natural log bridge, rational functions, you know, x to the negative one. Now we're seeing it making a bridge between secant and tangent. So it's a very important function in calculus, and it will continue to be so. One thing about this one, it's a kind of a tricky formula to memorize. I remember it as, you know, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, so I know it's something like secant tangent. Now you got to remember that it's a plus inside absolute values with the natural log. So, um, but... And I'm sorry that you have to memorize that, but it's just the way it is. All right, so in summary, let's take a look at our new rules for this lesson. We've got four of them. The integral of tangent is the natural log of the absolute value of cosecant, and the integral of cotangent is the natural log of sine. So again, we you know we see that uh, tangent goes with a co, so the answer becomes negative. Yeah, you know we integrate co, it becomes a positive. So remember that if the co results in the answer of your integral, make it negative. I, help, I can remember that cosine is on the tangent because I know it's natural log. And I know natural log is about 1 over x. So I start thinking, oh, well, tangent's got cosine in the bottom. So that's how I remember that it's natural log or cosine. Then I remember that it must be negative. As you can see, cosecant is basically the same as secant. It's cosecant u plus cotangent u. But because you have co, you put a negative. I didn't derive that formula. Feel free to work on that yourself. I think you can do it. Let's take a look at a few examples. We've got the integral of tangent of 3x dx, so we need to do a u substitution. We'll let u equal 3x. 
making du equal 3dx. So one third du equals dx. So this becomes the integral with a one third on the outside of tangent u du. And that's just simply applying the formula. We know that the integral of tangent is negative the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of u plus c. Uh, one of the things I think is interesting about this is how well the domains line up. The domain of, oh, let me go ahead and put that u in before I forget. You know, just looking at the domain of tangent of u, we know that tangent is undefined whenever uh, the u is equal to pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 because that's when cosine is 0 and you can't divide by 0. Notice that the integral is also undefined at those values, but for a totally different reason. When u is equal to, when this u is equal to pi over 2, then you get cosine pi over 2, which is 0, and the natural log of 0 is undefined. It's the absolute value, so it's okay for this to become negative because the absolute value make it positive, but it's still not okay to be 0 because you can't log 0. So pretty interesting stuff, I think, just how it all works out that way. All right, uh, let's try this next one. Uh, we really need to split this one up. So this is going to be the integral of 5 dx minus the integral of cotangent x over 3 dx. So that this one's easy. That's just 5x plus c. I'll wait and do the plus c later. Uh, I need to do a little u substitution here. So I'll let u equal x over 3. So du is equal to 1 third dx. So that makes 3 du equal dx. So this becomes minus, I'll bring the 3 out in front, the integral of cotangent u du. So 5x, remember we've already integrated that, don't try and do it again, minus 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of sine of u. And if it's okay with u, I'd like to go ahead and replace u instead of taking the time to write it again since it's Pretty painstaking to write with a mouse. <laughs> Need to get my Wacom tablet back. All right, so that's, I think that looks okay. Um, we'll move on now to the next question. I have one, two, two practice problems and then another practice problem. Let's do these two first. So do A and B. Pause the video, please, and then we'll go over them. All right, on this one, you should let U equal X cubed. So that DU is equal to 3x squared dx, making this 1 third du is equal to x squared dx. All right, so when we replace we x squared and dx, we know that's going to become our 1 third du. I'll just go ahead and bring the 1 third out in front. So this is secant u du. The integral of secant u is the natural log of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u plus c. All right, so this is one third the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x cubed was our u there, plus tangent of x cubed plus c. All right, let's try the next one. We've got a definite integral, I see. We'll let u equal pi x over 6. So du is equal to pi 
over 6 dx. That makes 6 over pi du equal dx. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in for the integral. Um, we need to change our bounds. So when I plug in 0, 0 times pi over 6 is still 0. 2 times pi over 6 becomes pi over 3. I'm going to bring, uh, this is going to become secant of u. And then dx becomes 6 over pi du. So I'm going to bring the 6 over pi out here. All right, and let's see how this goes. The integral of secant u is the natural log of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u And we're going to be evaluating that from 0 to pi over 3. So now we need to plug in pi over 3. The secant of pi over 3 is 2. Because cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine. The tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3. And so I guess I can just call these absolute value bars parentheses. I still need them as grouping symbols, but this is clearly a positive number. And that ends up being uh, our, let's see, our, our first part. We need to plug in the next number now. That's that's plugging in the pi of 3. Now we've got to plug in the 0. Now the secant of 0 is, um, let's look at this right here. The secant of 0 is 1. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of 1. The tangent of 0 is 0. So this is just the natural log of 1, but the natural log of 1 is 0. So this ends up just being 6 pi times the natural log of 2 plus the square root of 3. Kind of weird looking, right? Okay, moving on. All right, got a calculator problem for you. A bacteria is growing at a rate of dp over dt is equal to 6,000 plus 1 plus 0.05t bacteria units per day t. If the initial population at t equals 0 is 3,000, write and evaluate the accumulation expression that gives a population in 8 days. Pause the video, write that out, and try and evaluate it. Okay, let's see how we did this. We know that we have... We're trying to figure out the population in eight days. At t equals zero, we have 3,000. Then we're simply going to add the all the instantaneous rates of change. Now, the change in the bacteria population is given by dp over dt. So that's 6,000 over 1 plus 0.05t dt. And we'll be doing that from 0 to 8 days. All right, so let's type it in. We have 3,000 plus the integral of 6,000 divided by 1 plus 0.05t. We'll be doing t from 0 to 8. All right, make sure you check that this looks like what you want it to look like, and it looks like it's going to be 48,714.3. Now, if we want to get three decimal places, you want to go up there, highlight that, and press Enter. Um, and so you can see, actually, uh, two point should be 2.85... 2.86 is what I should be having here. So I'm going to erase that. 3, 2.86. Or 2.86. There we go. And that is in uh, bacteria units per day. Bacteria units are kind of like a weird thing. Um, so I'm just going to call it units. Since it was units per day, now it's just units because it's been 8 days. All right, let's do another one. Um, don't need the calculator right now. Go ahead and pause the video and give this one a shot. 
All right, hopefully you did a u substitution, and you let 3x minus 4 be your u. So that makes du equal to 3dx. So I have 1 third du equal to dx. So this is the integral of 1 over u du times 1 third. This becomes 1 third times the natural log of the absolute value of u, and our u is 3x minus 4. I'll go ahead and replace that, plus c. All right, let's try the next one. All right, you should let u equal 4x minus 1 in this one. So then du is equal to 4dx. making that 1 fourth du is equal to dx. So this becomes the integral of 1 fourth of 1 over the square root of u, du. All right, so we can rewrite this as 1 fourth times the integral of u to the negative 1 half, du. And I will raise the exponent by 1 and multiply by the reciprocal. So this is u to the positive 1 half times 2 plus c. And I'm just going to rewrite that a little bit here. Let's see. Make that 1 half. I'll even use the square root symbol just to be fancy. 4x minus 1 plus c. All right, let's take a look at the next one to do. So let u equal x squared plus 1. So then du is equal to 2x dx, making this 1 half du is equal to x dx. And we can integrate this, pull out the 1 half. This becomes u to the third du. And again, we raise the exponent by 1, u to the 4th over 4, plus c. And we don't have to, but we can clean up just a little bit. We do need to replace du, though. x squared plus 1 raised to the 4th power. And we're going to divide that by 8. All right, you have another one to do. Let's see. If you haven't done it, pause the video, please. But... Uh, I'm going to assume you have. Let's do this one. We're going to let u equal, what will we let u be? How about 2x cubed? That makes du 6x squared. So that's 1 sixth du equals x, oh, 6x squared dx, I should say make x squared dx. That's going to work out perfectly for us. This makes this the integral. I can pull out a 1 6. The integral of x squared dx became a du. So this is just cosine of u du. The integral of cosine u is sine u. So 1 6 sine u plus c. And we can rewrite that as 1 6 sine of 2x cubed plus c. Okay, got another one to do. Try this one. Got a definite integral. All right, let's see how we did on this one. I'm going to let u equal pi over 4x so that du is simply pi over 4 dx. I'll multiply both sides by 4 pi, so 4, 4 over pi, I should say, over pi du is equal to dx. All right, so this becomes the integral from not just 1 to 2, now it's pi over 4 to pi over 2. Pi over 4 to pi over 2 of cotangent u 
and dx became, became du times 4 over pi. So this is actually going to be 4 over pi out here. All right, so then we have 4 over pi times the natural log of the absolute value of sine of u. Then that needs to be evaluated from pi over 4 to pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this is 4 over pi times the natural log of 1 minus the natural log. The sine of pi over 2 is the square root of 2 over 2. The natural log of 1 is just 0. Uh, one of the interesting things, though, about this natural log is that we could use log properties, and we could actually call this the natural log of root 2 minus the natural log of 2. And we could even bring the 1 half and call it 1 half natural log of 2 minus natural log of 2, and then combine that even further. Um, so just lots of different ways that this could look. I'm going to simply keep it simple and call it 4 over pi times the natural log of the square root of 2 over 2. All right, I think that is all for this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.